now that we have the orders all varnished, it is time to put some leather collars on it. Now you might ask, why do we need to put leather collars on a set of oars? Well, these oars are spruce, so they need to be protected because the material is quite soft. Now, I remember when I was a kid, and we'd go on vacations up into Wisconsin and at a lake. A lot of the oars never had leather collars. In fact, I'd never even seen an oar with a leather collar. Well, oars typically back then were made out of ash. Now, oars still are made out of ash. It's a much stronger, harder material, so there is no reason to protect the shaft of the oar with a leather collar. These particular oars are made out of spruce, which was provided to me by Steve. If some of you may remember that it was a tree, a spruce tree that his great-grandfather had planted in the front yard. So part of the ethos of Arabella is that using as locally sourced materials as you possibly can. Well, you can't get any more local than the spruce tree that's growing in your front yard. So that's what this spruce came from, was from Steve, from that spruce tree that his grandfather had planted. So with that, we need to put some leather oars on these, or leather collars, I mean, on these oars. So let's get started with that. So the first thing to do is to set up the oars in the proper orientation so that we have the stitching on the top edge of the oar. But before I do that, I had several questions about how I varnished both sides of these oars while it was still wet. Is that I have these little triangular pieces that I have some drywall screws run through there so that when that sits on there, it just barely touches the surface. Now I have three, because everybody knows like a three-legged stool is always level. So especially with a surface like this where it's a little concave, it will then always ride in there and be nice and stable so you can put the next coat of varnish on there. So now we can take these oars and get them positioned in the proper orientation so that we can start putting the leathers on. So as I had mentioned that we want the oar to be in the proper orientation. And that is that we want the oar up and down like this that would be in its rowing position, uh, at least the pulling rowing position. And so we want the stitching of the leathers to be on the top of the oar in this position. So that's my first step is I'm going to get this set up. So in order to keep this in this position, what I'm gonna do here is I'm going to take a cabinet clamp like this and put it in my vise. Get it close to the width of the blade here. Take a little softener so they don't damage the ore. So now I've got that in the position it needs to be. I'm going to use this piece of spruce down here then to hold the handle up so that I've got a nice surface to work on the leathers. So the first thing we need to determine is where the leathers are going to sit on the oar here. Now if we use that Shaw and Tenney uh, formula for figuring out what the inboard and outboard loom should be, which is taking the beam between the two oar locks, which in the case of, Air, of uh, Victoria is 47 inches. So you divide that in half, which you get 23 and a half, and then add two inches. So we end up with 25 and a half inches from the end of the handle. So 25 and a half inches is right here. So if I put that in the center, of the leather. This leather is eight and a half inches wide, which is the size that the leather came. Um, so if 25 and a half is here in the center, then that would put our button here at 21 inches. Now originally I had said that I was gonna put it at 22, but adding a little bit more is not going to hurt. The button is not there designed to row against. It's just simply to let the oar not fall through the oar locks when you let go of them. 
So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to set the front edge of the leather here right at 21. So to get started, I'm going to mark that with a little piece of tape. Like so. So our next step then is to determine the width of the leather. And in order to do that, I'm going to put it on here, pull the leather around here. I'm going to make a mark. And then I'm going to move in about an eighth of an inch. So the leather is going to stretch and pull together. And I'm going to do the same thing on the back side here in case there is a taper to your oar at this point, then that will indicate that. So of course I'm going to need to then make sure that I know that this is the top. So the next step is to cut the leather off. Now I should have mentioned earlier to make sure that your leather is square, which I had already checked that the piece of leather that I have is. So what I need to do now is to cut this off and make sure that I'm cutting to our inside lines, not our outside lines. And it's always good to have a nice sharp knife to do this. Our next step then is to put some stitching holes in here. And to do that, we want to come in about an eighth of an inch, like so, and mark that out. I'm just going to use my awl to do that. I'm going to use it on this side as well. So the next thing is to put a series of holes in there. I actually have a uh, leather punch here that lines up three holes. So if I come in about an eighth of an inch again, that punches three holes in there. Now what we do then is line it up with the next one and move on down. One of the things you want to do is to make sure that the distance here is the same here so that when we stitch together it's going to be the same location. So I'm going to do that simply by eye and mark that spot. Now if you don't have a punch like this, you could also just use an awl. Uh, of course, in that, mat, in that case, you'd want to take a ruler and measure out uh, equal increments. Put the leather on. I'm going to put a little bit of contact cement on here just to stop it from sliding around. And we just need to get that up on here at the right position. A piece of tape here to hold it temporarily.
And now we can prepare our needles. So our next step is to get some thread. And this is some thread that is made for leather work. Um, and it's got a little waxy surface on it, so it helps slide through the leather easier. So I'm going to uh, pull off, off about six feet or so, which is about my arm span. So I'm going to use a couple of needles. I'm going to use two needles. And I like to use my sail making needles for this because they're a little heavier. And I'll find two of them here that are about the same length. These two look pretty good. These waxed ends really make it easy to thread into the needle. To get started, we want it to go under under like so. And once I've got those, I want to line it up and even up the threads. So then the first one goes, basically it's going to go over, under. And then I'm going to skip a hole and go under, over, under. in the hole. And then the other one, we do the same but the opposite direction. So over, under. And over, under. And then we can start pulling that tight. So basically what we're doing here is a basic baseball stitch. So again, I go over and under. And over and under. Okay, now that I'm to the end here, I can give it a good tight pull. <clears throat> and then it's just a matter of putting, oops, lost my needle, putting a square knot in it.
and then trim that off. <clears throat> and of course, this is where the button will go. So I'll get the other one uh, all attached, and then we'll make the buttons. So the next thing is to put the buttons on here. Now the buttons are there to stop the ore from falling into the water if you were to let go of it against the ore lock. It's not necessarily where you should actually be rowing. Now that um, inboard loom that we came up from the Sean Tenney formula that put it at 25 and a half inches, which is basically in the center of the leathers right now. Now th what that does is gives what they consider the ideal proportion of 18 to 7 from outboard to inboard. So that 18-7 ratio is considered what is ideal. It doesn't mean that you can't row anywhere inside of this leather and depending on what situation you're in you may want to change that. So first thing we need to do is to cut the buttons and I have this piece of thick leather from some project that uh, I'm going to use for the buttons. So this leather is about 3 8 of an inch thick and we want the button to be about a half an inch. So that's the first thing I'm going to do is to mark off here a half an inch and cut a couple of strips of that for our buttons. So what we want to do is to have a scarf joint, and I've already cut one here on the end, and we need to align this then with, or let me use this clamp to just help hold it temporarily. So now what I can tell is that where the beginning and the end of the scarf is, and I can cut that. All right, now I've got it all dry fitted on there, which looks pretty good. So the next step is to get some contact cement on there. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put some tape around the leather here so I don't get, so I know how far out that contact cement needs to be. Apply this to both the button and the leather. Okay, we'll let that coat dry and put a second coat on and then we can apply it. So once the first coat's dry, then you want to put a second coat on there and then let that dry thoroughly. And by dry means if, if you touch it and it's still sticky wet, then it's not ready yet. Well now the Contact cement is dry to the touch, so we can get ready to attach the buttons. First, I want to get this tape off of there. Now, the thing about contact cement is that you have one shot 
And once it's touching, it's going to stay right there. So we'll line it up, get started here. There we go. Now I, some people don't like to do this, but I like to do this. And that is put a little tack in there on the tail. So that's it for our leather collars. Now in the next episode, we're going to be back out to Mattapoisett to see the conclusion of season three, Victoria the Tender. So as always, thanks for watching. And remember, if you're going to make it, make it beautiful.